All right. Today's guest, I know this is an episode a lot of you have been waiting for. My guest today is Chris Powell. I hope you guys know Chris Powell. Please let me know Chris Powell. He is amazing. Uh, Some of you may remember him from the TV show Extreme Weight Loss. It was a reality TV series on ABC. It was formerly known as Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition. Um, Chris is uh, huge on social media. He's always sharing amazing tips and nutrition advice. Um, he also has two books. I don't know if you know, two, his books are choose to lose the seven day carb cycle solution. And also Chris Powell's choose more, lose more for life. Um, he's been on the Oprah Winfrey show 2020, the view, and also, um, a documentary that aired on TLC. Um, man, I mean, he's been on good morning, Arizona, good morning, America. Uh, so much, so many, Chris has been all over the place in this episode. I actually was down in Arizona and Chris was so nice to allow me to interview him in person. Um, we got into so much Chris was, he was so vulnerable. I so appreciated it. He, if some of you may know, um, if you know, Chris, you may know that he, um, got divorced recently and that he and his ex-wife Heidi were kind of this, you know, duo <laughs> for a long time. And he was so, uh, kind and generous to share the processing that goes through that divorce process. So I've been through that process. Any of you who have been through that process know that is not an easy process at all. And imagine being like this couple in front of the whole world and going through it. Holy cow. That would be really scary. And so he's just so transparent about the things that he needed to own in himself and the learning lessons that he had and all of these wonderful things that a lot of us go through in that, uh, I'll call it post-traumatic growth from divorce. So if you've been through a divorce or are going through that right now, it might be really helpful for you to hear his thoughts on that. Um, Let's see. What else did we talk about? We talked about aligning, aligning yourself with your true path. Um, he shares really cool stuff that I didn't know about Chris, um, about how, when he went through his first kind of ultimate low, this was before he even met Heidi, he was like living out of his car. Um, he had an addiction and he just felt called, he felt called to help. And he got, I'll I'll share this real quick. He had this tattoo where he felt like he was going to help a million people and he was going to cross off, cross off these numbers as he helped that many people. And he did it and they're all crossed off, which is really cool. Um, he talks about, you know, after this divorce and like, (laughs) anytime you go through something like that, I can definitely relate. You'll see on the episode. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I've been there. Um, he talked about going up into nature and just asking and aligning. And he talked about how he felt called to start something called move 1 million, which is growing like crazy. As he mentions in the show, it's in 71 countries. Now it's an app. I have it. It's really cool. The purpose behind it is amazing in elementary schools. It's just getting people to move more. So I'll let him share more about that. But anyway, this is like, honestly, such a high vibe episode. I was literally like high for the whole day after this episode. Cause it was just, it's just full of so much truth and realness and appreciate Chris sharing that with us today. So we'll go ahead and jump in. Here's the episode with Chris Powell. All right, guys, many of you know, I'm so excited to be here with Chris because we were talking a little bit beforehand and well, one, you're Chris and you have, you've done so much for um, encouraging people to get healthy. And I think so many of us are so grateful for that, but I want to get into like in your journey. And we talked about before we started like being aligned with yourself. Yes. And I know like back in the day, I heard you mention a couple of times that you were like living in your car or you got were addicted to opiates. And like, I feel like that was the first time that you really had to be like, Whoa, what's going on with me? And like recenter yourself. Can you speak on that? Yeah. I mean, cause it's, it's been, it's been a really crazy ride over the yeah. last 15 or so years. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, so really, and it's all, it's all still a journey of discovery yeah. of, of who I am. And I, I realized I just turned 44 and I'm still trying to discover who I am. I, yeah. I, I haven't gotten off that figured out, and I don't. Um, I don't think I ever will. I don't think we're supposed to. Maybe. Like that would suck if you're like I'm done evolving. <laughs> right, it's exactly right. And but but it's it's funny because sometimes I'm like, well, I've gotten enough figured out, so it should be easier now. Yeah. And I'm still, you know, it, and and I guess in certain in certain ways it is, because I I feel more comfortable in my own skin. Yeah. Even whereas before, I mean, in, in another in another life, but I was like, you know, I, I was hosting a show on television and everything. Right. And I'm like, man, he's got it all together. Right. I was still completely lost and learning, right? Yeah. And so yeah. 
way, way back when, and, and to, to, to bring a full circle to your conversation about like where, where I came from, um, it was interesting because like I was on TV a long time ago just because I've always been excited about fitness because it changed my life. And yeah. so I'm excited about sharing it with other people and how it can change their lives. So I found myself, you know, on the, the local news here, guess the Good Morning Arizona Fitness Guy. And I even see. then people were like, man, he's got it together. <sighs> and I was I was helping people change and transform. I helped my best friend lose like over four hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. So this cool journey of transformation yeah. changed my life. And then sure enough, a couple years later I herniated a disc in my back, L five S one, a bulging L four, L five. And the doctor, this is back in 2006, and he's like, oh, hey, here's here's for the pain. Right. Bottle of Vicodin about this big. And that started a two-year downward spiral where I thought, I mean, I was in my late 20s there, and I, I thought I was figuring it out. Yeah. And then, you know, what I figured out is that I'm an opiate addict. And over a course of two years, and it went from Vicodin to Percocet to Oxycontin to basically anything I'd get my hands on at that point. And then over those, over those two years... Whereas I found myself on this incredible trajectory of like, this is who I am, this is what I'm going to do. I went into the the darkest place that I've ever been in my life and, and I ended up losing everything. Um, I was trying to start a, a, a build a, a, a business around teaching people nutrition with colors and numbers mm-hmm. and everything and I created a product and it ended up going down the tubes and I, I couldn't I couldn't get out of my own way with the addiction mm-hmm. and with everything and so... Um, yeah, I, I found myself is uh, in the thick of it for a good two years, lost everything. Um, and then I ended up living out of my car for about six months, just kind of jumping from couch to couch, wherever people would let me in. And, um, and it was, but it was in the process of losing everything and it was the transition to, okay, losing the roof over my head to moving into my car to then calling friends and then sleeping on couches. That was like, okay she's got to change here. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's humbling. Yeah. <laughs> what, what I'm doing isn't working. Yeah. And so that was, that was yet, that was another, it was a, an awakening. It was yeah. a moment of clarity, right. if you will, where it's like, it's that proverbial moment. It's like, okay, this isn't working. The, the pain has gotten to a point. And when I say pain, not physical pain, but just emotional pain, totally. uh, where I just realized, okay, I, I can't continue living my life this way. I feel like I'm meant for more. And I'm not going, in fact, I'm, I'm moving further away from what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. And then, so that was, that was a whole process there. And then, and then there, there was, a, there was a comeback and that, that, that was the best part of, of the whole process. And we, we can get into that if you want, but that was, that was definitely the, the, one of the darkest parts of my early journey. Well, I, I, if my audience knows my story, they can know I can relate because I went through a similar thing, lost everything, couch surfing with friends, all that. And it, what it does it, for, for somebody who felt like they kind of had it all together and you find yourself, it, it's like, I have to look inside. I have to see that these are the results I'm getting in my life based off of something going on inside of me. And I need to figure out what that is. And that similar feeling of like, I know, I know there's more for me. And it's cool because we've seen it now, right? Like it actually was true. And I appreciate you sharing that because there's so many people it's like, well, opiate addictions, first of all, is like obviously huge. So I appreciate you sharing that for people in that boat. But whether, whether it's opiates or something else, you hit something there. You're like, I feel like I'm going further away from who I really am and what I'm really called to do and not being aligned with it. So you, you had some healing, you went through some stuff, you got more aligned on your track and obviously we saw a lot of that if you watched, you know, the show <laughs> and all of that. And it, one thing I have to highlight of that part of your journey real quick is, yeah, I used to watch that show long before I knew you. And Thank one you. thing I always noticed about you was like, I was like, he really genuinely wants to help. He really freaking cares. He just wants to help. And you can see that. And you can see Thank that you. to this day. That in that, your that energy. means a lot. Yeah. Because, and, and my intention has always been that. And it always will be. Because yeah. that's what my purpose is. Yeah. That's what I realized about myself in that really dark place. Yeah. Of what, who I am and, and what I'm here to do. Didn't mean to interrupt, but no. th- thank you for yes. seeing that. Oh, absolutely. I, to this day, I'll see stuff on your, I saw you share a workout uh, for people with uh, low mobility. Mm-hmm. And I and I was like, oh, that's just so heartwarming. Because you were like, you were kind of, for lack of a better word, like kind of half-assing it. But it, in a loving way, like you were, sh- you weren't yeah. like, look how awesome I am. I'm the super fit guy that can do this really well. You were, you were meeting them where they're at of like just gently kind of roll over and, you know, and so 
it's uh, energetically felt that through the energy that you're, you're showing up in life that you truly, gen, gen, genuinely just want to freaking help people. I'm, I'm so glad you saw that that video because yeah. that actually that movement it was three movements that, that mm. where I start with almost all of my my clients that I've worked with that are four or five six hundred pounds doesn't help for me to jump up and start doing muscle ups or cleans and jerks like okay that's right, nice but right. that's my my platform is not about look how fit I am right, <laughs> and I'm not right. in competition with anyone with, for fitness because there's a gazillion people out there that are far fitter and stronger than I am. And I was like, but I'm here to help people take those first steps. Yeah. So those kinds of circuits, those are created. That's why I, I would build for my people so that you wouldn't have to get up and down off the ground. Right. They could actually stay right there on the ground and they could roll over and they mm -hmm. could press mm -hmm. and they could roll over and they could bridge. Yeah. And it's like this little, little things that we can do that can make a really big difference over time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. like, I, I think, uh, I, I feel you on this so much. It's like this almost like, uh, it's like my whole resonance, my whole soul is I just want to freaking help because it means so much to us because we know how much better we feel as we get healthier. We know how much better we feel as we realign with ourselves. And it's like, freak, there's nothing more I want than for everyone to feel like that. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a service mindset. And you know, we're all in a different place on our path, what, you know, but social media is a very interesting place. Right. And I had a, <laughs> I had a conversation with myself long ago, long ago when I first started sharing, you know, I was just excited because lifting weights, I was like, Whoa, I'm getting stronger and it's making me a faster runner. And Whoa. I have so much energy guys. This is cool. By the way, you're a phenomenal runner. <laughs> Kudos. This is something Not I'm, anymore. Horrible at, but I'm more tired. <laughs> oh man. You should never retire. You're good at it. You're Thanks. really good at it. Thanks. <laughs> it's a, uh, it, my, my uh, time is, I feel more invested in, in helping others now, you know, but it was a wonderful season of my life and maybe I'll do it again. But, you know, I, I had a conversation with myself and I, I see this in you too of, is this for me or is this for them? Mm -hmm. Am I, am I showing up here? Am I posting this? So I look cool or successful or fit. Like, is this for me? Is it, and this was way long ago when I first started and I was like, that's disgusting. If this is for me, like stop, no. Right. And then if you need validation or you're using other people, you know, to that, that that's got to end. And it, and and ever since then, it's always been like I tap in. I tapped in in my car before I came in here. I'm like, please let goodness like channel through us for whoever listens to this podcast. Like, help us like share that goodness. I do know? the same ritual <laughs> every single time before I walk out on stage. Before I do anything, I I do that exact same ritual mm -hmm. in my own words. Yeah. 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 That's and so I do cool. that before uh, I post, I'll, I'll just be walking on the treadmill and I put the phone down and I just go inside and I'm like, what do they need? Yeah. What do they need? Like, let mm -hmm. me be, even if it's only one person that helped, like, yay. How lucky for me to be able to be in that position to share that. Like it m brings me so much joy, you know? Absolutely. And so it's this service mindset that mm -hmm. you have around health that is like, I, I wish that we had more of that on social media and people can feel it energetically. You can feel it. They know when you're like, I, I don't care if I sounded stupid or I said the wrong word or my belly fat is hanging over my shorts. That's not what this is about. I'm just trying to help you guys. Yeah. You know, so. it, well, it was, it's funny. Um, my late father-in-law, um, he always, he, he told me early on because I, for the longest time, especially before I started doing a lot more on television, I would get, I would, I'm a highly anxious person. Always freaking out about, about the future. And he, he sat me down. He's like, look, he said, you're so passionate about what you do, and I, you love to genuinely help help people. But he's like, listen to me, son. <laughs> he's like, don't take yourself so damn seriously. Mm, it's rule number 82 of the book. And I was just like, or, or, rule 62, don't take yourself so damn seriously. And I was like, hmm. And sure enough, when I stopped taking myself so seriously, it, st it stopped, it, it helps break that is it about me or is it about them because yeah. when, if it's about you you're trying to look all good and everything <laughs> and it's, it's ego yeah. and it's just like wait a second if I don't take myself so seriously and let the personality shine mm -hmm. first of all you're so much more you can connect so much more with people totally. because we're all, we've all got a silly side of us right. and they go oh my gosh yeah he's He's cool like that. He yeah. loves me too, and yeah, he can laugh at himself. Right, and, you can and be yourself. Yes, and then it becomes, <laughs> and then I, I, like, like I said, I have the same ritual I go to. It's like, 
what is this value for them? Yeah. How can I serve them? Is this right. going to bring, what will this bring into their lives? Yeah. And then so it's like, don't take yourself so darn seriously. Yeah. What kind of value can you bring into their lives? And I think it's just a, such a beautiful combination of those two mm -hmm. things. It's like, man, now we can connect and now I can really develop a relationship right. with the person on the other end of this. And, and hopefully, and you, you said this, how lucky am I to be able to deliver some yeah. sort of value? Yeah, it's, it's like man, an honor. That's that's a check you get to cash every day. Exactly. And it's it's not about the money, but it's right. just like man, you're, you're making you're improving someone's life. Yeah, there's yeah. no amount of money, and I'm sure you've turned down so many things. Like it's not even funny. I'm sure your email inbox is full of wonderful money opportunities, and I'm just like, yeah, but is that for me, or you're like, do I feel like people really need this, or am I just diverting them into a bunch of different things to buy because I get 15%? Like, no, right. no. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, yeah. it's, it's, it's staying centered. And that's where I, I kind of want to transition to because <laughs> I interviewed a woman um, named Anahata Ananda on my podcast. She's actually in Sedona. She's a spiritual teacher. You would love her. She's mm -hmm. so amazing. And she called it this one. She said, uh, we've both been through a marital liberation. <laughs> that's right. what she called it. Right. And, you know, I, and I, I have a wonderful relationship, co-parenting relationship with my ex-husband. And would never, you know, it's not, it's not, it wasn't, it's not about him. Mm -hmm. it, it, my divorce was not like. He's, I had to leave him because he's a horrible person. It's not like that. Right. It was just a misaligned uh, situation mm -hmm. for me. And my soul was like, it, you're out, you're so freaking out of alignment. It's not even funny. And my audience knows full well that, that you know, if you guys have followed my story, like it's, <laughs> it's, it's a very, uh, it's a lot of pressure. Society says that's bad. Yeah. Don't do that. For you're, sure. You're not allowed to do that. And you're a bad parent and all of these things. And I know for you, like you, I mean, I, I think pretty sure everybody knows Chris and Heidi, right? And so like, <laughs> I can't even imagine the pressure that you were under. And I was wondering if you could speak about like that second, I feel like awakening or realignment with yourself. Um, you know, we talked about that dark night of the soul that you have before. Would you be open to speaking about, you know, uh, feeling into when you're really out of alignment and the courage and the process that it yes. takes to get realigned? For sure, for sure. Um, you know, it's also one of those things where it's like, <clears throat> even like talking about my my personal life, it's always one of those like delicate things because it's just like oh, it doesn't have to know? be yours, but maybe just in oh, general. For sure. Yeah. No, Ryan. By the way, I, I'm I'm happy to discuss this because this is so real, and I know that like I'm not the only person who's gone through this. Right. Heck, if you look at the statistics, over fifty percent of Americans probably struggled yes. with something yes. like this in the past, and I can yeah. only imagine how many people are going through something like this right now. Right. And um, and same is like okay, after I went through my, that 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 really dark place and I, and I I realized my purpose again, which is like just that that strong. I mean, when you find it, when you feel it, you feel it, and I couldn't deny it. It was like it was something I was being pulled to do, and I couldn't stop it, even if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. it just it was like I am here to help people. I'm here to to help people take the very first step. Mm -hmm. Again, not to take them all the way through this crazy journey or anything, but just mm -hmm. like to give them hope, mm -hmm. to let them know that I don't, no matter where you're at, mm -hmm. mentally or physically, it's like, man, there's a way out. And so it was like, and I started off on that path, and within a year of discovering that, of when I was living in, out of my car, I found myself, I was hosting a show on national television, right. you know, on, on <laughs> prime time for five years, and it was like, <laughs> wow. You know, but what I did, really quick to, to backtrack, when I had that realization, I actually ended up taking some of the last sixty dollars I had. Probably wasn't the best money spent, but I tattooed the Roman numerals one through a million down my side, and I did this when I was homeless. And I said, "Wow!" And I and and I the tattoo artist is like, "Well, so what's this all about?" And I said, "Well, I'm going to cross them off. It's it's one, one hundred, five hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, and a million. I said, "When I make a positive difference in in these lives, I'm going to cross them off." Wow. I was like, "I have to have something to live for." Wow. And so that's, so I memorialized and I couldn't get out of it. That's I insane. tattooed it straight down my side. That's insane. And so maybe it was a good $60. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> I had no idea that. You knew though. Just deep inside. I felt you it. You knew. Yeah. And I had no idea how it was going to happen. I right. had, in fact, not only did I not have any money in my bank account, I was in, I owed $200,000 to people I had borrowed money from wow. and I tanked it in this business. Wow. And so I had a lot of digging to do. And, but sure enough, within a year. I was hosting Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition on ABC, but it, I had direction. And then and it gave me, having a purpose gave me direction, and then determination gave me velocity. Mm -hmm. And it was just like boom, 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 and it started to happen. And, and then even that, it was like, 
every mo- I'm not kidding you. Every morning I would have a moment like, is this for real? Yeah. <laughs> like, is this really happening? And it was right. going and it was beautiful and it was changing lives and sharing those beautiful journeys of transformation in front of like millions of eyes. And so people were inspired. Right. Totally. And all this was happening. And then the show ran its course. And, and, and over the, over that time though, you know, Heidi and I, no, granted, when, when we came together, it was just like, it was, there was, I, 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 don't, I, I won't say it's perfect, but it was just like, it was, it was meant to be. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. It was meant to be. 100%. And then over the course of our time together, people change. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. and, and it, it, it is, it is difficult when you're in the public eye yeah. and then when you're in a, a fishbowl <laughs> yeah. and people are watching and then it's us and, and through that process, people change. And um, within the show ran its course, this is like 2015, and then moving into 2016, um, there was just a, a slew of events that just started to break down the foundation of our relationship. Mm-hmm. And, and from there, I started to become, and I could only speak to my part right. in this whole, right. in the whole process, but like, I started to become resentful and I started to become angry and bitter and my jerk my that trajectory that I was on with that that direction mm-hmm. and velocity mm-hmm. it it got pulled much more into it wasn't it wasn't me it was like protect 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 mm-hmm. and I just started pushing everyone out mm-hmm. and it was and and I started to get upset with her and angry with her and bitter with her and it's just feeling lots of resentment mm-hmm. and and then and then it was like okay let's try to work through this and it was counselor after counselor after counselor after counselor and we went through seven counselors in three years you know and um and it, I wasn't I wasn't getting any better and again I can only speak to my part here and and I found I found that resentment growing and the more that grew the more it pulled me off my course and the more I lost myself. Yep. And it was, it's really wild. I feel like I, between my homelessness times, getting a tattoo down my side, having laser like focus on my purpose, I regressed over six, seven years. And I found myself in, it was actually, I, I thrived for a couple years and then I started regressing. Mm. And then, and then, and, and again, having been through a divorce, yeah, yeah. You, there is just so many reasons why you don't want to. Right. For the kids, it's for everything we've built. And right. of course, when you're in the public eye, <laughs> it was like, and, and we were Chris and Heidi. And right. there was this brand together. And I'm right. like, oh, I can't even imagine. How, how, yeah, what, how do we do this? Right. Number one, like, I, we don't, it's like so much has been built up around who we are Mm -hmm. but at the same time it was reaching a point where it wasn't genuine anymore and and because of the lack of authenticity there and there there was so much beauty to what we were Mm -hmm. but it wasn't that anymore it was falling apart right and then and that was a struggle for a couple years again where I lost focus of where I was going and what I'm here to do and then and through that process it, it just reached a point where my kids were seeing the worst part of me. And so that, that was, that was the, the moment, the second moment of clarity yeah. is when I realized that, you know, I have the two most amazing step kids and two most amazing biological children. And, um, they were seeing the worst side of me and I was angry every yeah. day. And it just, it got to a point where I just said, that's it. I, it's, I am, I need to, I need to create the separation. I will always be here for you guys, but I need to be separate because yeah. I've lost myself in this. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And so I, so I did it, and it was, and, and and I'm here. We are two and a half years later, and we're still cleaning it up. Right. And I was dreading the cleanup. Yeah. I was oh, dreading. Sure. I was dreading the mountain that mm-hmm. I was about to climb. Mm-hmm. And I put it off, but the longer I put it off, the bigger the mountain got. Mm-hmm. So it just said, okay, now's the time. Mm-hmm. And so now, number one, I need to start showing up as the best me that I can possibly be for these kids and show them that I'm not an angry person mm-hmm. and that I can be an amazing dad and I can be there with them and be there for them. And um, and so I made the decision. And I have to, I'll, I'll pause you right there. Like that, 
uh, it's so relatable. It's, it's stuff started feeling misaligned and you ignored it and it rightfully like it and understandably so. And you know, <laughs> that's a natural progression. It's just like, this is not feeling right. And you're just, you're feeling that out and feeling that mm -hmm. out and feeling that out. But it's like the longer that misalignment with ourselves go, goes, like whether it's like not speaking our truth or not like really knowing what we want or being clear about that. I feel like that is what I, I can definitely relate. It's just like, I always say it gets, it just, the longer you go without listening to yourself and your intuition, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And so like, I'm very intuitive now when I jump on that stuff because I'm like, I've just learned if you listen to it sooner, there's generally a little bit, it doesn't have to get like so freaking bad, but right. sometimes it does because there's learning lessons in that. And I appreciate you sharing that um, so much because I think whether it's like a, mar a marriage issue or something else in your life, when you've built this big ego structure, like this identity around it, like I had that as being Mormon for my personal life journey. Mm -hmm. I was as Mormon as it gets. This mm -hmm. is my life. I live in front of the temple. I am in leadership. Like this is who I am. I know this. I, you know, I believe this. And when that started to not feel true for me anymore, I mean, that, 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 uh, Tearing it down, like burning that down is so terrifying, terrifying. And, and then you're talking about how there's all these, uh, it would be easier to just stay. So we don't have to like spend two, three years doing all this and the kids, it'll be easier. But as you're showing, like, it's not easier though, yeah. because you're miserable when you're misaligned. It's not easier. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, a hundred percent. And, and uh, there were a handful of times over those years that I was like, you know what? I'm just going to grit my teeth and bear it. And I'm just going to stay in this. <laughs> that's that's what alignment sounds like. <laughs> I'm Let just going to endure it. this. <laughs> it, and and that, be, that turned into more resentment yeah. and more anger. Right. Yeah, and then, you, then, then you sit down with the therapist and the therapist says, hey, okay, so when she does this, this is how you need to react. And when he does this, this is mm -hmm. how you need to react. And that lasted for a week. And then it went right back to the way it was. And then it was just, and we realized we just, we were not making progress. And it was just, and we changed over the course of so many years. We both changed. Yeah. And um, yeah, and but, but let me tell you, you just, I could not force it. I couldn't force it. Yeah. I tried to and I just thought, but then what's, what, what do you, you become a martyr, right. right? Yeah. And then, but then what do you want your kids to do? get from that exactly. do you want to see one parent literally just gritting their teeth and bearing it and suffering mm -hmm. and being angry and, right and bitter and resentful the whole time it's like no because you're actually you're showing them what a relationship should look like exactly that's where i got to like i'm like wait 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 so what what, what would i want my kids to do in this scenario i yeah. want them to just be miserable and and not only that but the subconscious programming they're they're getting of this is normal so I should self-sacrifice and be miserable. That's what a normal relationship looks like. is self-sacrifice, sure. misery, anger, resentment. Like it's not, right. it, you know, everybody says, the, everybody, but society says like, that's actually better. You stay together for the kids. And it, I went through that same learning lesson. I'm like, that, that's, that's not true. No. It is not for them. It's for you. Yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. like using your kids as an excuse. That's how, that's how I felt anyway with myself. It's like you're using them so you don't have to, as an excuse to not go through all this terrifying change. I'm just going to be so noble and, and stay here for them. And that's like now on the other side of that, I was sharing with you earlier, my, my uh, 11 year old was just saying in passing, Oh, life is just so, you know, cause life is so much better now that you and dad are divorced. Or uh, my daughter who was 10 when we got divorced, said not too long ago, mom, remember how you used to be when you and dad were married? Cause I would get mad about stuff more, mm -hmm. right? Because sure. all that stuff was like boiling inside of me. And yeah, it's, uh, it's whether it's marriage, anything, it's when we're not aligned with ourselves and we're not listening to ourselves, we'll tend to blame others, resent oh. others. It's their problem. I have to deal with this. And it's like, Oh, actually you don't. Guilty. You, you don't. Yeah. yeah. I was there too. Yeah, and it's so cool because they see their mom a lot happier too. Right. Because right. not only was I, I mean, they meet, saw me more angry with her. And, and mm. I mean, she got, she got the worst of it. Yeah. And so they see her happy. Right. And free. she doesn't have to deal right. with that. They don't have to. And then, of course, then it would trickle over into them. If they yeah. just came in at the wrong time or something like that. But yes, you're, oh man, you know, you're, you're spot on. It's yeah. just like, and so everyone, there's peace. 
Yeah. There's peace. Yes. And that's the most important thing. Yeah. And that's what we can start to set a foundation on. And within that peace are mo- more and more moments of happiness. Yeah. And that mm-hmm. kind of even transitions into health, like a health journey. It's like when everything feels wrong and just mm-hmm. emotional turmoil and all of these things, it's like, what do I actually need to take by the horns and look at here and actually actually change? What do I have to admit in myself that I'm not wanting to admit so that I can come into this place of peace? You know, and it's it's tough sometimes because we have to like fight these ego protective structures of nothing's wrong with me. I'm perfect just the way I am. Right. And it's like, you, you are. <laughs> and also, uh, you know, it's okay to admit that there's some suboptimal patterns going on inside of you when you can hold compassion for that. Yes. And take a hard look. You can get into that place of peace. And I wanted to, I wanted to hit real quick on it's. Uh, I'm like, man, we've been drinking from the same cup. I swear, because <laughs> yeah. going into the mountains for me after my divorce and all of that was so freaking healing. I have an eagle in my logo. You do this phoenix thing, yes. and I was just like, all oh, so so similar. <laughs> and I was wondering if you could talk about. Um, I heard you. We have a mutual friend, Drew Manning. Is how we met love you Drew. Love and <laughs> and um i heard your interview with drew and you were talking about how you would go up onto the top of a mountain somewhere by your house and you would kind of get learned yeah. you kind of get schooled on stuff can yes. you share about that for, for sure so i was actually um it was it was right after the, the divorce and um it, it, it's interesting because it, it was yet another phase. It was almost like my, my homeless phase because I was kind of bouncing from yeah. couch to couch trying to find myself, asking a lot of questions. Yeah. And so um, I, I found myself, um, there's here in, in Arizona, there's a bunch of small buttes out in the East Valley. And it's, it's amazing because um, at night, and again, it's it's usually when you go through some, some yeah. traumatic experiences, some yeah. big life changes that... Um, I find I've and I I can speak to myself this way, but I've also found a common denominator amongst other people who've gone through traumatic life experiences that you're a lot more open yeah. to yeah. change yep. and you're more open to, to asking questions and receiving different kinds of answers, but being open to what those answers and so, those solutions might be. Yeah. And so um, I uh, I started driving out to all the the buttes in the East Valley and I would climb them at night so I could look out at all the lights. Of, yeah. of Phoenix and the, the metro area and I was up there I was literally I was just on a mission to find peace because still there's so much turmoil right. about taking a family apart yeah. and about yeah. who am I now and what am I here for what, what, mm-hmm. where am I going and how can I find happiness mm-hmm. especially when I feel this emptiness and I felt and I felt peace and I, I knew I did the right thing I never looked back there yeah. I did the right thing for myself. I did the right thing for Heidi. I believe I did the right thing for the family and for the kids so that they weren't around anger anymore. But it's like, okay, how do we do this? How can I show up as the best me for them? And how can I find... I, for the longest time, I was asking, them, how can I find happiness? And I realized up there, when I was quiet and I shifted my perspective physically, it, sh- it opened up my mind so I could shift my perspective emotionally and yeah. mentally. Yeah. And so I always had to, I had to change my view. And so yeah. my view would always be get up and look down on everything and just, just separate yourself from the game of it all down here. Yeah. Cause it's like, I see all, millions of lights down here. It's like, and for me down there, like that's the game where it's finances and where it's relationships and all this other, it's, it's crazy mess of things. Right. I got up there and it's like, what's it really all about? And I would ask myself every night I would go up there and I, in this search and, and I would, I would ask, I would just, Hey, I'm here and I'm open. And I cried a lot of tears up on that mountain. And, uh, I said, how, how can I find peace? How can I find happiness? And, um, I asked the question a handful of times and nothing really would come to me and I'd go down the mountain and uh, then go back to the condo that I was living in at the time and then, um, but about, about, I don't know, the fourth or fifth time that I went up that I really opened myself up and I was like, how can I find peace? Like, what's this all about? This overwhelming, like, feeling came to me. It wasn't a voice or anything like that. It it was just, I just felt so strongly and I literally felt it like in my chest and in my stomach mm-hmm. it was just like serve them like you're you've been looking in all the wrong places it's, it's interesting because subconsciously under the, under the surface as soon as the split happened there was this constant voice that was like I'll show her 
I'll show her. I'm going to be more successful. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I literally ran and I opened up four different LLCs and I was going to start a, a real estate business. And then there's going to be a, like a, a, a insurance business. And this, I, oh, I was literally running and I was like, how fast can I make money? And then literally the voice is like, you will find no happiness and no peace in chasing money. Serve them. Look out at all the lights and there are millions of people suffering out there. Mm. How can you bring value to their lives? And it was just like, oh my gosh, I had that same feeling in 2008 wow. when I had nothing and I went to the tattoo parlor and got those Roman, Roman numerals down my side, one through a million. It was about serving them. It was about helping people that needed it. Yeah. And it was like, that's it. And I went, got it. I got it. Okay, got it. I went, so I went down the hill. But then the next question is, how am I going to serve them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what can I possibly do? And so, um, but I, I also recognize I, I've got a platform. Yeah. I have experience and I have an education and I have knowledge base. Um, I have a network. Okay, so what can I do? Yeah. I went down the hill and I turned on a, uh, but, but the, in, when it came to serving, there can be no financial reward because it's not about the money. It's about just doing good, spreading love and light into the world. And I, without sounding all kumbaya, because I'm a very sciencey person. It I'm was very like, kumbaya and oh. sciencey, so it's it's all good. <laughs> okay. and, you know what I realized? They're one. Of, they go together. Yes. You can absolutely weave them together to create some real value, like to really bring yeah. love and light into the world. Yeah. And that's what I am here to do. And it was like, that's it. Now go do it. I went down the hill. No joke. Turned on the TV. I was literally just flipping through the stations on cable. And uh, I was like, who's got cable these days? But yeah, I was just <laughs> flipping through the stations. And I saw a blip on a, it was a documentary on uh, Japan. Yeah. The history of Japan. And they were talking about, in 1928, the Emperor Hirohito mandated uh, three and a half minutes of movement across the entire country, blah, blah, blah. And it's called Rajio Taisu, which means radio calisthenics. And at 6.30 every morning, mm -hmm. the entire country would do it. And it changed the country. You know, by 1955, Japan was the healthiest country in the world. They united, all this other stuff. We're a month into the pandemic at this point. Mm -hmm. Everyone is, is, I mean, suffering. Because we're, mm -hmm. like, everyone is quarantined. They're, everyone's talking mental health issues. We're only a month in. We have no idea how bad it's about to get there. Everyone's no one's moving anymore. Right. Everyone's worried about being quarantined yeah. and mental health issues. I was worried too, big time. And and I saw that and I went, oh my gosh, that's amazing! I can't believe they did that. And it changed yeah. the country and all this other. And so I started googling it and I just cool. pulled up all this information. And I went, we need this. Mm. This is going to be my service project. And I started my service project then. And like that, it was like, let's go. I found myself. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. And I was lost. I was lost and on a downward spiral for mm. four years, mm. maybe four, four and a half, five years. And it was like in a moment, I was like, this is why I'm here. Cool. So awesome. I can do this. And I built my service project, which is move one million. Mm. And it all started from there. So uh, <laughs> it, I, I have to highlight a couple things because meditation is part of the practice I do with my clients and coaching. And I always say like, ask, ask out loud, ask, ask things. But don't expect an answer right then. It might not be, because it honestly, some other things might have to come and play or just, just release. And that's what you did. You just got, I'm asking and you weren't like, well, I didn't get it. I call it like microwave syndrome. Like, <laughs> what is my purpose? Your purpose is this. You know, it's just like, oh, chill, keep asking, keep, stay open. And like the nuanced uh, flipping through cable channels, who would have ever thought? And then that's part of the reason is like, be patient, just keep the faith mm -hmm. stay open you know and then the messages will come in when your energy is looking for it and open yeah. and i love what you said about being back because I, I i told you i noticed that it's just like the, the energy shift in you even on social media i was like oh chris is back yeah. that's like saying chris from like the show like that's that's there he is yes. you know and it's it, it is you said like my purpose is bringing love and light into this world and and sh and and help you know and it's truly like i feel like the main message of this is you want to be happy like serve, love, give, but, and also while staying aligned with yourself, Yes. right? Not yes. in a self-sacrificing energy because like you're serving on move 1 million, by the way, guys get the app. Like it's really, really cool. What Chris has it's done. It's free. <laughs> you, you tell them a little bit about it real quick, yeah. like what it is. Oh, absolutely. And so, I mean, it's, it's, 
Um, just like in Japan, where they implemented three and a half minutes of movement across the entire country at six six thirty in the morning, the radio would play. It's the same music. It's thirteen movements, and it takes the body through a full it's full range of motion. It's a total body warm up, yeah. top to bottom. And so I just thought, okay, we could do this, but we could do it better. And so I created. It's a two and a half minute because. Three and a half minutes nowadays is a long time. So I was like, I shortened it to two and a half minutes. Yeah. It's 13 movements just to honor the the, the, the origins of what it is. Mm. So two and a half minutes, uh, 13 movements, total body warm-up, top to bottom, uh, engages every muscle of the human body. So it's made to oxygenate the brain, to basically yeah. get us moving, stretch and strengthen the muscles. Um, and then we I coupled that, though, because the movement is so necessary I coupled it with two minutes of mindfulness mm. to bring us here and now. And I just, again, I talk people through, some people say meditation, others say mindfulness. And it's, uh, there's different mindfulness exercises, but what we did is, I, so I created that. And then, um, crazy story, but I was, years back when I started training people through the, the, the journey of transformation, I was so inspired by what it is that they do, I actually wrote a song for them called The Hero's Journey. Mm -hmm. And I never really shared the music or with anybody and because there wasn't a time or place and I just thought oh my gosh so I actually choreographed the movements to go with the song the hero's journey mm -hmm. and then but then again as per the overwhelming feeling that I had none of this is mine anymore I literally just packaged it up mm -hmm. um, I brought in my development team and we built an app where um, I, I guide us every single day. It's a new broadcast. And then the people submit their videos wow. in boxes around. It looks like a big Brady Bunch thing. Mm -hmm. And people all around so the cool. world, they film themselves doing this. And we actually do it all together to so music. Cool. It's, it's because during the pandemic when we were yeah, isolated, right. it was like, how can we bring us together? Totally. So you can actually move with other people. So, so we move together. Then we're mindful together. And it ended up taking off in the public schools here. So Mesa Public Schools, which is the largest school district in Southwest United States, 64,000 oh, wow. kids. Um, they adopted it. It's in every K-6 school in Mesa, so good. Goodyear. Um, I mean, and now we're, it expanded. So it took off in schools, bringing movement and mindfulness to the kids in school. So after the Pledge of Allegiance, all the kids remain standing and they all do Move One Million. Oh my gosh. And uh, now That's it's grown. So it's in 71 countries. That's so good. <laughs> we, we celebrate one year next week. It's in 71 countries. We're moving 84,000 people every single day now. Um, it's just so cool. Do you see the joy on his face? Like just, it, it makes me so happy because that that right there is like when you know you're aligned. Like it's, it, it's just the joy of being able to be part of something like that that's like filling your soul yeah. and, and uplifting other people's souls. And you, you said earlier when we were talking about the rolling around on the floor, you know. Yeah. You said, like I, I totally agree with you. I've actually noticed that. I'm like... Chris is really, really good at getting people to take like that first step. And that's what I heard you say that. Like you are, and like that, like for kids to be able to have that, like just that little intro to mindfulness or adults, anybody, just it's not gonna take a lot of your time. Just yeah. have that one little spark is huge because it shifts you into like prioritizing that kind of thing where some people never even thought about it before. Yeah. So, so, yeah. And so good. That's what I'm here to do. Yeah. I realize it. Like that's why I'm here to help people take a first step. Yeah. Yeah. There are other, like, if you want to run a faster 40, yeah. increase your bench. Yes. I got yes. great coaches that I'll refer you to. They're yes. way more knowledgeable than I am. They know all this stuff. I love yeah. giving people enough hope and believing in them enough to help them take that very first yeah. step. And then my job is done. Yeah. And if they want a little more, I can, like, I can guide you along the way and be like, go, 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 go. Yeah. But there's a, there are so many people that need to take that first step. And that's what I'm here to do. I love it. I got yeah. a visual of you being at the starting line and it's just, Chris just has a starting line. He's like, go, 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 <laughs> yes. go. And somebody's um, really struggling. Like, Chris, we need you to down right, 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 like, Okay, it. I will. Yeah. But I got to get back to the starting line in case anybody else comes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm here to do. Yeah, yes. it's very obvious. <laughs> so awesome. All right, well, we'll go ahead and wrap it up, guys. If you don't follow Chris on social media, you're totally missing out. It's real Chris Powell. Um, what, what else? Where else should we turn? Move One Million app? Yes, yeah, so Move One Million, it's at m1m.org. Or on on um, social, it's at Move One M, and um, and those are those are that's, my yeah. You can find everything you need from there. That's everything right there. Yes. All right, Chris. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been so fun. Thank you.